Hello and welcome back! Previously on Lawrence Plays with Power Tools, you saw me putting together a box section to go over some pipes. It went pretty well, but the hardboard I used for the front of the box wasn't rigid enough and didn't hold a good edge, so down it comes! Fortunately, it's nice and easy to remove because it's just held in place by four screws and, well, and some friction. One of the mounting points had split when I attached it to the wall and when I took a look at it, uh, I, I just made it worse, so we'll need to do something about that as well. This time I've bought a sheet of 9mm MDF, which is much stronger. As before, I need to start off by drawing the required shape on the board, and I'm going to use an edge cut by the professionals to make the long vertical edge that's most exposed, since I expect them to be able to cut much straighter lines than I can. Sadly, I don't have room for a table saw. Once again, the saw sees use as a 90 degree guide. It works well for this, although sometimes the teeth do get caught on things. Once I'd drawn the basic outline, I removed the hardboard from the frame, again just by undoing the screws. I could then lie the old front over the outline of the new one to make sure that they lined up. I knew that the old one was the right shape, so this is a nice way to check that my measurements were about right. It fitted well, but it did remind me about the extra details that needed to be removed, so I noted them down to check more carefully later. I also marked where all the screws had gone through the board, so I could use the same holes in the frame for the new front piece. Finally, I drew circles around all these dots so I could tell the difference between a hole mark and random dirt on the board. Out comes the workbench, and the board is fixed to it, ready to cut. The first cut takes a nice sized piece off the end, so I measured this to make sure I got a nice cut. I'd want to use this piece later. I decided to give cutting a long guide another try, so I clamped the rail to the board. I'm still not convinced it helped, and only actually ended up using it for this cut. It's tricky to make a big cut like this, partly due to reaching over the board, but also because I ended up needing to support the off-cut that was trying to fall on the ground. Once I cleared the table, I ended up sliding it along a bit so it would be supported. Jigsawing is a dusty process. I decided to do the L-shaped cut next, despite it being a bit fiddly. This was to give me the biggest pieces of leftover board possible, so they would be more useful for future projects. The hardest part of this was deciding how to place the board on the table. The cuts went very well, despite doing them freehand. With a bit of practice, it's actually quite easy to follow a line with a jigsaw. I had the same problem with supporting the off-cut, so I decided to cut slightly further away from the line, and then come back to do a more accurate cut afterwards. One more cut and I've got the basic shape. This was just straight across, which is much easier, except I'd only clamped the board at one end, so it shifted a bit and I ended up cutting to the table. Oops. I guess I'll be repairing that in a future video. With the basic shape finished, the next step was to measure the detail cutouts to go around the boiler tray and the toilet tank supports. These mostly required square cuts out of the board, but I was able to get the required shape by going in at an angle and then curving the cut, then going in the other way to get the other right angle. A quick sand around the edges to remove any burrs and soften the edges slightly and I was done. Sandpaper gets surprisingly hot when you use it like this. Of course, I already had the frame from the previous build, and so it should fit nicely without any modification. And it did, except the hot glue I'd used to tack it in place while fitting it was leaving a raised area, stopping it resting flat. Normally hot glue peels off very easily, but I think because the wood was textured and somewhat porous it wasn't coming away. I ended up using a hairdryer to soften the glue and a knife to cut it off. This worked perfectly, leaving practically no trace of the glue behind. I did another check with the old front, just to make sure I hadn't missed anything, and then went round drilling the mounting holes that I'd transferred over from the old model. Once they were all done, I put the front on top of the frame, balanced it carefully in place, and then ran the screws back in. I'm pleased with how well it all matched up, apparently I am capable of a little bit of precision. Happily, the MDF is soft enough that the screws are able to countersink themselves without me needing to drill the spaces out first. Remember I mentioned a split bracket? Well, I needed to remove and replace that. With both ends split, it wouldn't hold onto the wall well enough for my satisfaction. It was quick and easy to remove, and then it was time to start cutting the plank again. The exact size of these pieces doesn't matter as long as it's about 2 by 2 centimetres, so I drew lines for three of them, rather than re-measuring after losing a millimetre or so to the jigsaw blade. Cutting pints was much nicer than cutting MDF. The edges are a bit splintery after cutting, so I sanded them all smooth before using them. I think I'd like to get a belt sander to make this a bit easier in the future. I measured the distance between the holes from the old mounting block and drilled pilot holes in the new one, then readied the screws so that I don't have to fiddle with them once the block was in place. Frustratingly, as I was fitting it, the block split again, but I decided it was held well enough that I wasn't going to worry about it. Back when I fitted the box before, I felt there wasn't enough support in the bottom left. This was partly due to the flexibility of the hardboard, but also I, because I reckon I needed another mounting block down there. So that's what I did next. As before, I drilled holes through the block and, and marked onto the wall, then switched over to a masonry bit to, to drill the actual holes in the wall. A pair of roll plugs and some screws later, and another mounting block was ready. 
And now the last step, fitting the box again. It's quite a bit heavier now due to the thicker material, but it was still fairly easy to fit into place and, and was actually supported even without the screws. I did put the screws in though anyway because it wasn't in quite the right place. And there, that's the construction complete for that part, nice and sturdy. As is traditional with home DIY, I've probably massively overspecced the materials, but that's better than the alternative. The next stage, which we'll probably have to wait until we've had the basin replaced, is to build another box to run along the bottom, essentially from the back corner up to the basin. I'm going to wait to do that until I know exactly how big to make it though, however it should be quite straightforward. I'll run a plank along above the pipe here and have a piece of MDF attached to the front. I'll also put in some support blocks at floor level to hold it in place. Once that's all complete, I plan to put some filler in up between the box and the wall to get a nice finish and then paint the entire room, including the boxing. That will get rid of these gaps and make it look like it's just part of the room. If access to the boiler is required, I can remove the front screws and take the front board off, which will mean the filler won't be disturbed. The gaps by the boiler are fairly small and much less noticeable because of where they are, so I'm not too worried about them. I hope you've enjoyed this insight into my most recent DIY project. It's not 100% finished, but there are other things that need to be done before I can continue any further, and I think the room already looks better, even with a raw wood box instead of the pipework. I'll carry on making videos as I do more work, and I hope you'll come back for those. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.